Welcome to the Quantum Guide Show, where you will find interesting guests and discussions about cutting-edge topics to assist you on your journey. The Quantum Guide Show is ideally suited to the newly awakened and for those who feel isolated by their newfound beliefs. The mind, body, and spirit thrive when we have a mission. And there is no greater mission than to become the change that we wish to see in the world. So hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube, Odyssey, and Telegram channels, and share this show with your friends. Welcome back to the Quantum Guide Show. Today in episode 85, I'm very happy to introduce you to my special guest, Frank Jacob, writer, director, and researcher. Frank Jacob is an international award-winning filmmaker, presenter, visual artist, musician, and composer. Having teamed up with the U.S. motion picture production company called Screen Addiction. His recent films explore the frontiers of consciousness raising subjects in the films called Solar Revolution, The Claus Dona Chronicles, and Packing for Mars. In March of 2022, Frank broke a story about a mysterious group called the Guardians of the Looking Glass, who claimed to be a breakaway faction of the controversial Project Looking Glass having resurfaced to help humanity avert upcoming disasters, which exploded onto the internet. This time technology makes it possible to peer into timelines, future probabilities, and more, and appears to be used by rogue elements in government as well as the elite to bring about a technocratic dictatorship. He followed up with a tale of two timelines, a webinar that dives deep into the history and main protagonists of that story, which connects consciousness, ETs, CERN, AI, time travel, interdimensional messages, the meaning of timelines, and an upcoming cosmic event with the power to propel mankind into a quantum evolutionary leap long predicted by Indigenous peoples around the world. Known for his enigmatic approaches, Frank has artistically realized many different subjects that would not ordinarily find their way into the audiovisual medium. This has included an exploration of blindness using visuals called beating darkness for Austrian sight researcher, Michaela Velike Perel, an afterlife video epitaph depicting the work of deceased architect, Herwig Ilmeyer, and an annual report in the form of a live cinema narrative entitled Information is Art, which he performed live in 2007 at Carnegie Hall at the world-renowned Doctors Without Borders benefit concert. Other highlights have included a first-of-its-kind live cinema feature called Loop Live Cinema, where musical stage performances were orchestrated in tandem with dynamic visual sequences projected as dramatic narratives. He was invited to conceive and perform a unique live cinema spectacle in January of 2010 in collaboration with the 65-piece symphony orchestra in Salzburg, the birth town of Mozart. During his years as a senior editor at the Red Bull Media House, Frank also began writing, directing, and producing extreme sports films. He was director, producer, supervising editor, and the prime contributor on season two and three of the hit Red Bull TV show called Ultimate Rush. As a presenter, Frank's multimedia presentations take his audience deep down the rabbit hole into hidden history, transhumanism, artificial intelligence, secret technology, human evolution, timelines, and parallel worlds. Hi, Frank. Welcome to the Quantum Guide Show. How are you doing today? 
Hi, Karen. Thanks for having me. Good to good to be here. I guess we're done now, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope we're just getting started. Yeah, you you've done a lot of very interesting projects, but I'm really uh, curious to learn more about the um, the webinar that you have out called "A Tale of Two Timelines." And I'm wondering um, if you can just start off by telling us how did you get to the point where you created and produced the webinar? Well, the, uh, the webinar was a faster way of making a film, I guess you could say. You know, usually the films that we've made over the years take anywhere from two to five years to complete because there's so much work involved in them. And sometimes the information needs to get out quicker as in the case of the material that was is being presented in the Tale of Two Timelines. And the Tale of Two Timelines is kind of, um, it's called that because the subject matter has to do with a technology called Looking Glass, specifically Project Looking Glass, which existed back or was active back in the, um, well, you know, we know that it was active in the 90s and early 2000s, but it may go back even further than that because you know, of the material itself, you find out that the people and the characters involved go all the way back to where Oswell in, in, the, in the late 1940s in a group called Majestic 12. So, but more specifically, the looking glass that I was uh, triggered to do the webinar about had to do with this group. You mentioned them in the bio, um, a group that appeared calling themselves the Guardians of the Looking Glass. So I had obviously been exposed to some of the looking glass material in the course of the years that I'd been making films um, with Tanya Maidenford, who also knew about it. And Bill Ryan was one of the characters or one of the protagonists in Packing for Mars, our, our film about the breakaway civilization that also had done interviews with some of the protagonists, including Dan Bruish, who was, I, th I think, one of the main protagonists in that project. Um, and so I knew about it and I didn't hear anything about it though in, in the last 10 years. The last thing one, one heard about it, and it's actually still floating around, is a video uh, interview by Carrie Cassidy with a guy called yes. Bill Wood. Yes, I've right? seen Who's it. Name? Yeah, you may have seen it. So Bill Wood is actually not his real name. His name is Brock Brader. And he is uh, apparently, you know, he was dethroned, you could say, in a very disgraceful manner. Um, and they essentially discredited him. They made him renounce all of his claims um, and said he made the whole thing up. So, you know, to this day, there was a big mystery about it. And I, you know, but, you know, he kind of left the scene with the statements that, well, he put his testimony out there. What he said to carry was true. Um, you know, but there is, it was talking about an event that was going to take place in 2012. And the interview was at the beginning of 2012, and the event was going to take place at the end of 2012. And we all know that that event was supposed to be on December 21st, 2012, which was the big event that everyone was waiting for, the Enlightenment of Humanity, or he was calling it the Awakening of Humanity. And, you know, that was the time when the game was over for the Black Hats and the White Hats had won. Well, we all know how that went out. You know, they didn't, they didn't uh, win, and the game's still going. So, um, you know, many, 10 years went by, essentially 10 years, almost to the day. And then I was on his website looking for some other material, researching stuff about the Ukrainian war. And I was, you know, just scrolling down some Telegram page. Uh, and then I saw, like, totally unexpectedly, this little blurb that said Looking Glass or the Guardians of Looking Glass or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but it had Looking Glass in it. It had me uh, immediately curious because it had no place there in this particular subject matter. So I clicked on it and I ended up on a YouTube page of the group calling themselves the Looking Glass Guardians. And they had maybe, they had two videos up at the time. There were about 70 views. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing going on. And I started to watch the videos, of course. And then I was like, it, it, they were these text you know, videos, basically in computer voice, reading off who they were, where they came from, what they were all about. And it was pretty, you know, goosebumpy for me because I knew a lot of the material and what they were telling, you know, in these videos was true to my knowledge. I mean, in terms of their their history and, the, and their description of the Project Looking Glass. And so I sat up and took notice and I, you know, and it was uh, they were talking about a series of events that they were going to disclose to the public that were going to start taking place between now and 2030. And we all know that number 2030 has a lot of meaning these days 
with people that are at least that are working on you know awakening and on disclosure and stuff and people that are in that are involved in the world economic forum the klaus schwabsters as i call them those people have an agenda which is shooting for 2030 and if you've been into uh the the uh, agenda 21 material that actually is one of the dates in agenda 21 there are also other dates but 2030 is kind of a milestone date and they were talking about things that were going to take place and they were going to the only way they could stop them from taking place to their understanding was to release open source the information and have as many many people talk about it as possible because if a lot of people are talking about events that are planned by the cabal false flag events and there's a buzz going about them taking place then there's way too many eyeballs on it so they have to pull they have to pull back Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so that was very intriguing to me, and I, you know, I didn't really know what to do at first about it. I just kind of mulled over the information, and I started looking around, thinking, well, someone's going to write about it. The usual suspects, you know, that that were involved in that material, but nobody came up to bat. And I'm like, ten days had gone by, and I'm like, well, I think if this material is real, you know, nobody knows if it's real or not, but it had a, it had an air of reality because part of the um, ingredients also were you know, vaccinations and vaccinations are a big subject in our society right now. Plus, uh, um, blame game uh, situations between the United States and and Russia pertaining to war and what was going on. We were in the early stages of the Ukraine conflict. Uh, So there was, you know, Russia and America, you know, so there were all these elements that were all there and they were talking about them. So I wrote an article about it and it was published in a German blog because I'm living in Germany, so I wrote it in German, and it was put out, and within hours, it had been picked up by an expat in America, John Nolan, who runs Inspired Channel, yes, who I didn't yes. know at the time. And John had, uh, I guess, John knew Jan von Helsing, who was the person who ran that that published, that news, news blog, and he called Jan and he said, hey, can you put me in touch with this guy, Frank Jacob? And so he did, and he called me up, and we arranged an interview. I, didn't, I still didn't know who Inspired was or who he was. I figured... You know, another one of these internet bloggers, you know, I've known them over the years and you get between 80 and 800 or 8,000 if you're really lucky views. So we did the interview and it was um, released on the next Monday or Tuesday and I saw it come out and then I realized, and I realized, wait a minute, you know, the numbers were already at 8,000 after an hour. Uh, and then it was like by the end of the day, they were up at 25,000 and I'm like, okay, what's going on here? So, you know, it just exploded. Uh, and you know, we all we did was talk about Looking Glass, the technology behind it. I was describing how the technology works and some of the other related looking or time peering technology, and it seems to have caught fire with many, many people uh, compared to you know the way it, the way it went ten years ago. I mean, the, it was fringe material. It still is fringe material, but there was nowhere near that kind of reaction. So that by the time you know, I think a couple of weeks had gone by, well over a hundred thousand people had viewed it, and by now over two million people, I've been told, have watched our videos. So there seems to be something going on. And I made the you know the blunder of the first interview, op- opening my big mouth and saying, "Hey, I should do a webinar. I have all this material I've been saving up and researching over these years." And I got hit by hundreds of emails of people saying, sign me up, sign me up. So I was stuck. Mm -hmm. I had to do the webinar. So the webinar had to be, of course, something more than just like an hour of talking about something. I really wanted to give people something of value that went deep, deep into the whole subject matter, not just the looking glass guardians, because we didn't even know if they were real. We still don't know. You know, it's like this is a mysterious group. They popped up. They did a data dump. The information is uncannily and eerily you know resonant to the zeitgeist of our times and uh, they're still kind of floating out there and it's evolved somewhat since that was april or march i guess and now we're in mm-hmm. you know we're in august oh, sorry we're in september so you know months have gone by the story has, has taken many twists and turns um and we were documenting that all along the way so the tale of two timelines basically goes deep into um you know the beginnings of that technology how they found that technology uh what the te- how the technology works what it does uh and and then we talk about the predictions and and that are going on and whether they're credible or not because they're you know we're talking about um earth changing events here literally cataclysm science comes into it the whole idea about you know uh programmable um or let's let's just say gene therapy that's being used in modern 
immunology technology that uh, that are now making their way into the vaccines, especially particularly with respect to COVID. So all these things were like they're real, and and I looked at them very deeply, and so it turned out to be like a three part course, actually like six hours or something like that, going into it. So that's kind of the real fast track version of the story. Wow! Wow! Wonderful. Now I just want to ask you a little bit because you were talking about Bill Wood. I'm sorry, I can't remember what you said his real name is, but one thing he said that kind of uh, gave me a heads up was he said that um, the powers that be, it's like a chess game and you have the side that's winning and it's clear they're winning. And then the side that's losing, which he he described as being, you know, the so-called elites. I don't call them that. I call them the parasite class because everything they name. have, they have stolen from us, right? Yes. But anyway, he said that the game was basically already over, but they were just playing out the very end of it. Do you think that was true, uh, Frank, or do you think that's probably not true? Well, I guess that, that that's a critical point you made here because I looked at that material and I know that chess analogy and I was using it up to uh, even a couple of years ago in some of the live talks I was giving. Um, but um, I mean, in the sense of the chess game, yes. But in the sense of what Bill was talking about, Bill Brockbrader is his name, uh, is it wasn't true. In fact, I contacted, I, I reached out to the Looking Glass Guardians with an email they left on their YouTube channel. And we began a brief and sparse correspondence. But among the details that I got out of those correspondences was that Bill Wood was actually a shill. And he was put there on purpose to deliver 50% truth and 50% lies. And this seems to be an unfortunate thing that's happened in the disclosure community. There's a lot of authors and people and famous personalities and channels and all kinds of people out there that are dropping information out there, which is tainted. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and because it has a certain amount of truth to it, it resonates with those people who are hungry for the truth. They resonate with the truth. Everyone who hears the truth, they, something in their body, in their cells, mem memory activates and they feel the truth. But because they don't know the subject material very well, they tend to fall for the lie part of it as well and get misled. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the well-known techniques that the cabal uses to distort and and uh, and control the uh, the opposition. It's con it's called controlled opposition, actually. And it goes all the way back to Lao Tzu and the art of war, in which they say, if you want to be the opposite, if you want to beat the opposition, be the opposition. And so a lot of the people that are placed right now, and as we've learned, that was one of the later, the last messages, um, you know, that led to, uh, you know, with the Looking Glass Guardians, that led to the surfacing of a guy calling himself Gideon, yes. who uh, was talking about... Um, you know, being involved with some white hat hackers that had uh, um, leaked information about software they were developing for this upcoming financial reset. And they were, you know, they were talking about how how it works and that it's actually a class based, uh, you know, a tiered uh, system. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, so, you know, the, the information that the Looking Glass Guardians brought out in their first video, what I liked about it is it contradicted Bill because it said, no, it wasn't 2012. Obviously, 2012 was one of the critical dates, but mm -hmm. there was also 26, 2012 and 26 and 2022. Um, so, no, I always get this wrong lately. I don't know why, but I think it was 2012, 2016 and 2022. Uh, mm -hmm. And 2022 was, these were all, these were three timelines that they observed in the Looking Glass data where a new timeline sprouted that led to the defeat of the cabal. And they were expecting, because they were insiders, that something would happen in 2012, which it didn't. They were mm -hmm. expecting something in 2016. And, you know, like we're talking a major announcement here, some kind of an official declaration, because the Looking Glass technology was gifted to us, actually. It was intended to help humanity, but it was it was kept secret by these cabal members. Mm -hmm. And so when 2016 passed and they still weren't seeing the, what they were expecting, they knew the final year to release something according to the data they had was 2022. And they also knew that whenever they tried to interfere in terms of like, you know, just going out and assassinating, you know, key players, because that would just then eliminate the problem, the timeline would adjust and they would see them coming in and they would never win. So the idea was to kind of put it out there so everyone started blabbing about it. You know, when everyone's blabbing about it, it sort of ruins the secret, spoils the party, right? So mm -hmm. I like the idea that the timeline, according to the Looking Glass Guardians, wasn't set in stone. 
And in fact, it isn't set in stone. And uh, either the 2012 version or the 2030 version, uh, they talk about that point of being a point where it goes white, where they can no longer see further and any more data, nothing comes forward. They don't know what happens after 2030. And that's because you can't tell because it's still open. It's still mm -hmm. in flux. And we're still on what I say, I say we're on two timelines. I know there's a lot of people that like to contradict that and say, no, you know, certain people have already said we're on one timeline, the white hats of one, you know, we're all heading into the fifth dimension. But I was taking a look around at the world and I'm going, I'm a little bit too paranoid for that. And I know a little bit too much about what's happening. And I'm observing this whole world economic forum strategy coming into being and the whole transhumanist agenda coming very, very fast. And at, in, about 12, in about 2012, there was a guy called Jordy Rose who released a lot of videos and talks at MIT and Stanford University and places like that, introducing the D-Wave quantum computer and what it was going to do for society. And he was explaining it in terms of a tsunami that was going to hit society in about a window of 10 to 20 years where they were not going to see it coming. It's going to bring Usher in an era that is connected with artificial intelligence like we can't even imagine. And he was likening it incidentally and funnily. It, it was very humorous, actually, or tongue in cheek, you might say that it was like aliens had sent a signal to the president of the United States 50 years ago. And it said, we're here. We're coming and we're going to show up in 50 years on this and this and date. Get your society ready so that they're not freaking out and panicking when we land. And now, like tomorrow is 50 years, right? That's what he was saying. And that really made me sit up and take notice. And in fact, that almost became, you know, the, the film, the subject matter that we made a film about instead of packing for Mars, because they were happening at roughly the same time around 2010, 2011. That whole thing started. The whole filming process started for packing for Mars. So... For me, um, I knew that there was something coming and I, I was looking around, you know, and there's just this digital currency thing is coming. The Vax thing happened. No one saw that all these like, you know, the same people that were saying they predicted all this stuff. They didn't see the lockdowns coming. They didn't see COVID coming. So I'm like, am I going to trust that or am I going to trust something in me is saying, no, there's something not right here. You know, we can't just be sitting back letting the show go on like that was another thing the q movement came in there saying you know mm -hmm. we got this right that whole expression we got this you know i appreciate positivity and positive you know affirmation and we got this is one of those cool fun phrases but i mean if by just saying we got this is like saying we hope this you know and hope is like they tend to think it's a positive thing but hope is still doubtful hope mm -hmm. means that something could still go wrong but we hope it doesn't right instead of knowing Knowing is very powerful. And uh, when you look at what's happening out there with the Yuval Hararis and the Klaus Schwabs out there, those people, they know what they're working on. They know their strategy and they know they have the money behind them. They know the media is plugging their ideology or hiding what they don't want out there. Uh, so that's a knowing with that a disclosure movement and, and the people in the alternative scene do not seem to have. They have a lot mm -hmm. of doubting and a lot of people out there are saying, yeah, I'm from you know, Arcturus or whatever, and I'm at walk in and I'm bringing this message, you know, um, and, you know, I mean, sure, some of that might be real, but how much of it is real and how much isn't real? And I'm sure the real people in that scene, the real, you know, the people that are really channeling through, that are reaching through to other dimensions are looking around at those people that are also claiming something that they're claiming and they're seeing there's a difference in the quality of the information. And right now we're being flooded undoubtedly with a whole you know exponential amount of information misinformation false leader information why to keep us looking at what's really happening you know and that's i think that's why for me that was the main reason that i wanted to do a tale of two timelines because it had to be done fast and it had to shake people up it had to shake them out of the you know out of the slumber that everything's okay that the white hats have got this because mm -hmm. i found out now there are no i don't think there are white hats in the sense that there's no real movement of white hats out there. You know who the white hats are, Karen? We are the white hats, mm -hmm. you know? And if we keep expecting the white hats to come, like it's like the Hopi saying, we are the ones that we've been waiting for. So if we keep waiting for the white hats, they're never going to come. There might be some white hats, no doubt, like there's good people in every organization. 
those are the mm -hmm. white hats. There's white hat hackers. You know, they're, they're, those, that's actual technical term that's used by software companies to, you know, that they use white hat hackers to go in and find leaks in software, like especially banking software and things like that, where it has to be absolute airtight so that black hat hackers don't get in because black hat hackers are real too. But this is real in the sense of real in the real world and not in the, you know, in the, the world of like, you know, space colonies that are going to come and land and pick up human humanity and save us and all this stuff and they're going to stop it they're not going to let that happen all these things that i've heard you know that doesn't work for me anymore you know i knew that it wasn't working for me because i knew we have something called free will and how can free will exist if there's going to be some group that comes down here gets us out of the trouble that we're in and then leaves again or then you know it's like I mean, if that was the case, why didn't they start before we're at critical? Now we're at like one minute to 12, man. <laughs> it's like, why wait until the last second? Like, okay, yeah. here we are. We're going to fix it. They could have come like 50, 70 years ago. Actually, they probably were. Uh, and, and slowly ease society into this assimilation. But they didn't. You know, they didn't. There's only really two or three groups or four groups of aliens that I'm certain about because of the Tale of Two Timelines material, which you find out about when you when you do that course. That, that have been actually documented and filmed and there's footage, gritty footage and whatever else and recordings. And there's a doctrine of convergent timeline paradox, which was left behind by those involved in that material, which actually talks about what's going on right now. That was written 30, 40 years ago, Karen. It's wild. It only makes yeah. sense now. So for me, those were those were points I could grab onto. That was something that had meat. <clears throat> All this mm -hmm. other stuff. It was great. You know, I mean, it's great to deal with channeled information because people have inspiration. We all do. I'm a mm -hmm. musician, you know, I channel music, you could say. I hear mm -hmm. music, I hear melodies, I hear text, and I see the song and everything. I even see films before I cut them. That's channeling. But it is but it's very subjective and it's very tied to my own personal filtering, which is based on my own education, based on my world picture, on my ignorance of what's going on in the world and my limited thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So these are all things that are going on that we have to get past. So, yeah, okay, I just talked a lot. Maybe you should jump in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really like what you're saying, Frank. I myself am an experiencer. I've had interdimensional messaging. I've had experiences with uh, what I will call ETs um, and angels and things like that. And I got to tell you, the messages that I get, I'm not saying I'm right and everyone's wrong. Hell, I don't even know if I'm imagining the whole thing because my my experience is so fantastic i don't expect even anyone to believe me i don't even have physical proof but that being said the messages are very very clear that we have to become the change we want to see in the world i downloaded the nine steps to quantum health transformation which is a lifestyle program teaching people how to detox how to um, detox from the construct you know, how to put together their own spirituality, which is within, the expert is within. And, and, and I've been working the program myself very diligently for years, correcting my diet, correcting my relationships. Like it's a huge job. And I got to tell you, it pisses me off a little to see, see all these famous people say, saying, oh, the Palladians are coming to, to save us. If it isn't that right. the white hats are coming to save us, Trump is coming to save us. We don't have right. to do anything. All we have to do is just get out the popcorn. And I just think that is the biggest disservice to humankind because I perceive everything we're going through is our opportunity for soul development. Do you want to add anything or comment on any of that? Sorry, I didn't mean to ramble on, but um, yeah, no, I wanted to jump in because me this, that, the sit yeah, no, I, I yeah, savior. exactly. Well, one, what I would say to that, what I would say to that is that you, um, you know, there, the idea that you can actually bring something through. Um, I think what uh, what bothers me about that is that people call it. Uh, you know, like they, they, they call it like they're bringing in something from somewhere else. But what what is what bothers me about it is that it negates humanity, my, our own innate qualities. We have these abilities. We have these telepathic psychokinetic abilities. We have we have abilities to tap into other dimensions with our consciousness. We're wired that way. It's mm -hmm. us. We don't have to put it into any we don't have to call it anything else. I think most, many people are afraid 
of take of standing and owning what they're bringing through as who they are they have to give it some name like i'm bringing in sharon or whatever you know it's like no i'm bringing in frank man it's like this is me take it or leave it right it's frank frankly speaking right you know yeah. it's it's like i think you know and that's the one thing that uh that really um you know that that irritates me about the scene i think people i remember at one time i went to a tarot reader and she didn't use tarot cards she used a regular card deck and i said i said isn't that a kind of cheating like you know are, are there like are those as magical as the, as the tarot i mean this goes back maybe 20 years right i was still very young uh and it was like and she's like you know i don't need a tarot deck i just use cards because it freaks people out if i would just put the cards down and read them directly into their faces right so they like the card it's the medium it makes them feel comfortable that there's something telling the story that isn't a person tuning directly into you and i remember how profound that affected me because i'm like wow it's like you know this person was like saying essentially they don't need anything they could just bring that through and yeah. so i think we have these abilities and and we just you know we don't take we don't take ownership of them um you know so the and the idea of of waiting for other people to come in and take responsibility for something we should all be doing like especially the famous people in that regard what i wanted to say was i i think that what often bothers me is that there isn't a lot of sourcing going on like one of the things that I always try to do when we do our films at the end of our films, you see almost like 10 minutes of credits in some cases, because if people want to study and for and research for themselves to find out if, it, if it's resonating with them, they need to know where you got that information. And so many people plagiarize out there right now and they just take the information and they just put it out there and you can't verify it. And a lot of the people that are bringing stuff through about the secret space program, they've got nothing to prove it. And so they bring out this information that's a lot of times based on people's ignorance. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I'm really that kind of bothers me as well. It's like, well, why don't they have and they have they have this certainty about them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, you know, nobody can ever be is 100 percent certain because we've shown that everything's in flux. We're a living, dynamic, um, you know, group of uh, group soul, you could say, on the earth right now that's going through this experience as hum humans. And, and we are all of us affected and all of us are changing it as we go. And some of us can rise up all of a sudden unexpectedly and, and set in motion events which can seriously alter the outcome of, of a consensus that seems to be moving in one particular direction at any time without any plan, without having been seen. That all can be possible. But it's all that just shows how much in flux it is. And these people that have this certainty that has always bothered me, like how can they be certain? And in fact, then it, their event comes and goes and then there's some excuse like, oh, yeah, we all averted it and blah, blah, blah. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. But it's better. Yeah. Why, why not just take the position as this is the information that that I'm looking at, that we're looking at. Let's study this together. Let's look at this together. Look at the sources. Uh, let's analyze this. Is this happening? Is this coming? This is what we found. Have, have you got anything better? Right. And, in, you know, many mm -hmm. cases people don't because there's very few people that are as geeky and go into the subject matter as deeply as people like myself and other researchers that I know out there. So, yeah, but usually, you know, we are we have a certain authority in terms of the material that we get but even that is like i would never present something with this perspective that i know this i would say mm -hmm. this is what's out there this is what we know about it to now but that could change at any moment and that mm -hmm. changes that gives people the opportunity to participate right and so that means that it's not just one authority telling you something and then they always come back to that authority for the next answer because they don't have the power in themselves they don't believe it they believe they've given the power to this other personality who claims certitude and so they've taken away from their certitude of exploring it on their own does that make any sense oh absolutely does does absolutely does and um you know the the whole thing is that instead of looking for external sources to tell us what to do, it's all in here. This is where it comes from. I even think that a lot of my amazing paranormal experiences are coming to me through my higher self, my connection to spirit. Um, but it's always the same. It's, it's everyone has their own inner guru, their own methods of healing, their everything. And once we realize how powerful we are. We can come together, take responsibility for ourselves. We don't need the churches to tell us what to do. We don't need the government to tell us what to do. We don't need uh, the medical industry. Oh my gosh, it goes on and on. And it's all about cha-ching, cha-ching, moving the wealth 
from the common people to these this parasite class, as I mentioned before, they're just stealing it all from us. I want to get back a little bit to the guardians of the looking glass because I was kind of surprised at the turn that it took. It started off with these sort of prophetic um, um, telling us about, you know, what, what if this happens, this might happen, if that happens, whatever those dates came and went. Then they shifted to giving us the responsibility of being the guardians. And I kind of, in a way, liked it because I thought, yeah, we have to take responsibility. You know, I guess I'm, I'm, maybe I'm a dreamer. I don't know, Frank, but I actually even believe that if the internet went down, we could still communicate on, on a, on a telepathic level. We can still share information. We can still find each other. That's how powerful we are. So I kind of liked it when they switched to that. But then when they went to the Gideon thing, at first I thought, oh, this is great. Oh my God, we all need to know this. And then I went to their Telegram channel and found out it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And what really did it for me, as I said, so those of us who are unvaccinated, um, what's going to happen to us? Because all the categories, right, for, 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 for the... Um, the categorization for us, we, you know, whether we're sovereign or whether we're SRQ. in class, um, you know, it, it all involves vaccination. So I asked what will happen to the people who aren't, and I couldn't believe the anger and the bullshit answers. And the basically, uh, they were basically telling me um, that I was stupid for not getting vaccinated and i'm going what the hell what? is going on here so I are you serious ask, I, do, was it was it a real group of theirs because that sounds i've never heard yeah. that angle no that that's was new. their real that was their real group because that actually, bill the guy bill sweet or whatever his name you know his yeah, probably bill an, sweet. Bill sweet one, I, mean, he, I think is he definitely is anti-vax i mean that he would uh, say that is, is a big surprise to me but i know that there was a lot of infiltration over. There was a lot of uh, fake groups that popped up, um, and yeah. then there were a lot of like they had a lot of you know they had a lot of people. At least they were saying that there was a lot of agents. They called them attacking them, yeah. and I mean that's yeah. to be expected. But I yeah. I um I had my own little dance with them as well because you know they respected me because of all the the exposure I was giving them. And then I uh, when this whole thing about you know joining up and becoming an, an S class person being converted and then dropping money into an account that you wouldn't see. It became very dubious to me to ask people to do that and whether or not they are real. I mean, no one's ever proven like, you know, I saw someone in a chat the other day saying, well, now that they've been proven to be a hoax, you guys should come out and claim they're a hoax. And I'm like, no, no one's proven they're a hoax. Sorry. Yeah. I tried to, and there's a group that even tried to, they couldn't do it. And uh, so we don't know if they're a hoax or not. And if you look at Gideon's latest drops, I mean, I got to say, I'm sorry to say it, but this guy is hitting the bullseye so in so many points, like mm -hmm. no one else out there. Nobody. I'm sorry. Not not anyone. Right. I mean, maybe me. I mean, I know some of the. I, that's why I can verify, because I know that some of the stuff he's telling is absolutely true. And people mm -hmm. don't go there. They just don't go there because it's absolutely taboo to talk about some of the things he's talking about. But he doesn't, he talks like someone who doesn't give a flying crap about what someone thinks of him after he drops it. Um, so but that's a side subject. What I wanted to say was that I put my own foot out there and I said, look, your strategy about getting a group to join from the inside is flawed. And these are the reasons why. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, I, I hit them as hard as Gideon hits with his angles. Uh, and they didn't like that, of course, you know, so they, um, you know, they kind of kicked me out of the group, too. So, um, and I, I watched them and I'm watching them, keep an eye on them, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and if, um, but I always told them, we, and John and I did a kind of a recap of that whole thing when we said, look, you know, we've invited them on the show. We want to, we want to help them. We, we absolutely know that this material, that this stuff is going on. And I've shown the patents. I mean, the whole tiered cast cl classification based upon, Im uh, I mean, uh, vaccine status. This exists. This is no. This is all stuff that exists. This is not conspiracy theory. This is real stuff. It's happening. Okay. And they're the only ones that are actually talking about it. So they're doing a great service on the one hand, 
but but we said do not do not put like the fight the battle has to be fought here on this this side before the reset because i don't really think that I, and i said this to bill i said and to gideon or whoever is listening or whoever it is i said if you guys really think that you're going to get five or six families or whatever people that are worried to come in there and fight the battle on the other side you're delusional man this kind of work takes gritty hardcore thick-skinned people that have proven themselves you know uh, to be able to go through hell and come out the other side relatively unscathed and i'm sure i, I don't think you're going to get that quality of person by you know kind of opening up the door to a lottery of people that you know that want to come in and save their families and whatever that's not the way to do it. And that's definitely the wrong strategy because you're immediately going to get people that are going to say, see, it's a crypto hoax. And what happened? Exactly what I said, what happened, happened. So they've taken they've taken two steps back. I don't think they're pushing that angle as, as actively any longer. They're probably still pushing it. And people that invest, if you invest, man, do it if you can, if you have money to play and money to lose. That's what I always yeah. say. Do not invest if you do not if you don't put your last dime on on it, you know, because it could be a fraud. It could be a hoax. It could be a controlled opposition thing. But the other side works this way. They will give us real information, and it's up to us. They just do. I think they do. Let's just assume that they're on the other side. Then why would they drop this information out there? Well, they're dropping it out there for one to see if there's still a pulse out there. Is there enough people that are still going to get angry? when they hear the truth like this, that actually could become a serious resistance movement. They want to know that. These are all simulations that they run, live experiments. There's even a name for that, you know, live games, uh, you know, that, that you can look up. It's like people, uh, there are these games that are being played with us. They do these simulations out there in the wild. I know this for a fact. And this yeah. could very well be one of those things, but we have to be smarter than that. And I always say that, and I say it at the beginning of the webinar, we need to up our game. We need to, you know, don't trust anything. You have to go inside yourself and see if it resonates with you. But we can take the information, and I've mapped out where the information is based on reality and where the information is dubious or don't don't bother with this part of it. It's not important. So yeah. this is the this is the I think the approach that we need to take with the Looking Glass Guardians. I don't even you know I can't say for a fact that the Looking Glass Guardians are the same as Gideon and his white hat hackers. Although many people seem to make that jump to that conclusion, but why mm -hmm. you know on, on based on what? There's no evidence that they are you know. So don't just claim it. That's that's useless, you know. Mm -hmm. But the information Gideon is putting out there in these posts and these these intel drops. I mean, I'm sorry. There, there's really some really powerful stuff coming. He's talking about the the, the pineal gland, right? In his latest mm -hmm. drop, and I was just in a discussion with my biophysicist friend Dieter Burrs. He released a book on the pineal gland, and we were talking about the, with another uh, astrophysicist who was explaining information about what's coming out of the cosmos right now that is influencing. Uh, you know, our, our consciousness, and that is actually influencing our pineal gland. And it turns out that the cavity that contains our pineal gland is a lot larger than the actual pineal gland. It's like there's a vacuum, a space around it. So that means either the pineal gland was once larger, or it means that that space is there to accommodate the pineal gland that is going to start to grow now based on the stimulation that we're getting from our position in the cosmos and our level of evolutionary development that's happening at this moment in time, which even the J-Rods talked about in the Doctrine of uh, Convergent Timeline Paradox decades ago, that they never could have known that if it was fake, right? They just knew hardcore stuff that was happening, and it's happening right now, and Gideon's talking about that. Who else is talking about that? Only me, my friend Dieter, and a few other people are talking about the pineal gland and what its, what it, what its role is in terms of now. So I was surprised to see that in a Gideon and tail drop, I got to say, Karen. It, yeah. it made me take a step back and go, wait a minute, I mean... Many of us have now discovered that the world is not what we thought it was, and global events have left many feeling unsettled and even isolated. Karen Holton offers vital services that may be just what you need as she supports your journey into the weird and wonderful. Karen offers awakening support and ascension consultation to support individuals on their journey. For more details, check out her various vital services. Once you find your way through this process, there are many blessings on the other side. Visit Karen's website, KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com, to get started today. 
you know, what he was talking about Germany too, you know, uh, the second world war being staged and, you know, Hitler and yep. stuff like that. I mean, I've never heard anybody talk about that. And I've gone into the history. They are talking about David Irving. Okay. I've, I have excerpts of David Irving's historical d explanation about Churchill there. And, and they're talking about Churchill being a big scoundrel. And it's true. He is, he was a war monger. He's a war oh, criminal. Yeah. Okay. And they're talking about this, Gideon and Bill. Who else is talking about this stuff? So that, I'm telling you, I was surprised. I got a hand. I wrote them. I said, "Kudos to you guys." I don't know if you're phony or whatever. I was watching this, and I'm I'm impressed, you know. But you didn't get the part about the pole shift, and you didn't get the part about the about the energy coming from the center of the universe. So look for the next Intel drop having suddenly this information in it. I'd be surprised because it seemed to me like they were tapping the information that I was releasing in the webinar into the Intel drops coming out of Gideon because really, literally, Karen, I've heard nobody talking about this stuff. Not mm -hmm. on that kind of a frank level like like they are at this point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, all good stuff, all good stuff. Now let's, uh, did you want to talk a little bit about the pole shift? Because to me, I just want to say that it makes a lot sure. of sense. And I'll tell you why is because I've watched, um, I watch um, another, um, well, lots of different YouTube uh, shows, but uh, not just YouTube, but I guess podcasters. One of them is uh, called Dutch Sense, and he covers all the um, earthquakes that are going on in, in the world. And he's he doesn't just uh, show where the earthquakes are. He 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 goes right into Google Earth and shows you what's going on in those areas. And industrially, everything has been just rotting away, no repair, no no structure repair. Everything's just fallen apart massive land masses that are just for fracking and 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 oil rigs and it does make sense that when you're driving holes that many deep holes all into an area it would weaken the surface right but my yeah. point is that i'm trying to make is it's almost like and i've suspected this for years that a natural disaster is coming that they know about that we don't know about so why yes. bother repairing anything if this is going to happen then right. lo and behold, you I, I've watched, you know, Mavstar and, and different people talking about the poles shifting, but then you came out on inspired with John Nolan and you showed how fast the pole is moving and it only gets anyway. I'll be quiet and let you talk about it if that's okay. Please tell the viewers about it because I'm sure quite a few people don't even know about this okay. yet. And this yeah, I think it's really important to eminent. know here. I'm gonna show you this. Okay. This is this is the information that um, describes what's going on. And you can see um, on this end of it here, this is like 1800s. And you know, the pole began, the pole, the pole, the magnetic, we're talking about the magnetic pole here. There's two different North Poles. There's the actual right. North Pole of the planet, like the actual physical place that's the furthest North. And then there's the magnetic North Pole. Those are two different things. Mm -hmm. So. The, this is the magnetic North Pole, and the magnetic North Pole wanders. It's known that it wanders, and it usually wanders on average about 30 kilometers per year. When we released our film Solar Revolution, we were at that time 10 years ago. It was moving at about 30 kilometers. That's about, um, what is that, uh, 17, 18 miles per year, something like mm -hmm. that. And uh, so you can, and this, this, um, this is the progression of the. You know, these yellow pins are basically where the pole has been in successive decades, right? And uh, and then right around, like, it's funny, if you just keep following it, it seems to be getting faster and faster and faster. And right around up here at this point where, where this black line is here, this is 2018. And that's where those people that were putting this information out officially, like the, you know, the official government weather report sort of type sites, the one that was putting this, stop putting the data out. And um, this is why, you know, Gene from Mavstar Observatories decided to put together a group of, a team of people around the world that set up their own measuring reading stations and began to track the movement of the pole because they wanted to see where it was at. And to their shock, and this is the, this here, this red area is just this year. I think that's the year we need to be looking at right now because this is the critical point. They've noticed mm -hmm. now that the distance that it used to travel in a year, it's now traveling over three times as fast as that. Now we're looking at it traveling about five miles per month, 
right? And and on this here, on on this side, you see this last line. This is an actual measurement, you know, just and you see the boxes here showing the measurement, and it's 36 miles between the last date they measured, which was 18th of August, which is just a couple of weeks ago, and this 40 degree mark right here, you know, where they have the little volcano. And the reason they have that volcano and the 40 degree mark there is because essentially um, 40 degrees when the Earth's magnetic um, North Pole moves to the 40 degree mark, generally what happens, and this is another thing that I guess I could show you, is that this is an experiment that that was run. And if, if this over here on the on, on this little box is the Earth, the okay. magnetosphere turning, um, and this is the this represents the magnetosphere of our Earth, then you can see here what happens when it reaches 40 degrees. It flips. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And it flips very, very fast. You know, this is how it works. Yeah. And uh, and I think this has had this has some people very, very concerned right now because, um, you know, even, um, you know, even the, 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 the observatory, the people involved in that team, nobody knows what's going to happen. We don't know for sure if that means it's going to be a fast flip. If it's a if it's a pole shift. If it's a pole inversion, let's say, a very fast pole inversion, it may just flip and, and the north and south magnetic pole changes. And we may not really feel it so much. It may cause havoc with navigational devices, with electronics, with the airplanes in the air, you know, because they've had to adjust their compass every year now. In fact, I'm, I was talking to some pilots that were saying they actually have to adjust their um, navigational equipment on board their aircraft on a daily basis now. <laughs> That's how fast this is changing for them to yeah. get to the destination they're looking at. So we're, you know, everyone, it's anyone's guess, but if it's a fast flip and it just switches like that, then we might be in the clear, we might be okay. These, these pole shifts have happened historically without the earth changing. However, that's no guarantee. That another thing that could happen is that it, if it moves very slow, like if it moves at, at a certain pace, that's too slow for it to change quickly it will drag the earth with it and in that case what what will happen at that point is we'll be bathing in ocean water mm -hmm. i mean it's going to be a cataclysm event you know mm -hmm. and and so i think the reason that we, i wanted to put this out there with gene well sorry i always say gene <laughs> john oh, on yeah. uh, on inspired channel is um because i think as many people we need to get this to as many people as possible i know that uh mavstar has a a user group of a couple thousand people you know some geeks that are watching this stuff but we need to get this out to millions of people because we need to be prepared that what this means is that in seven months time five times seven is 35 in seven months time that's looking at april next year april, could be facing yeah. that shift whatever that's going to happen and so we mm -hmm. should prepare ourselves mentally spiritually and even physically, you know, for that eventually, for the worst eventuality, it can never hurt to back up your supplies, to have food on hand, to get you through a month or so without having to go to the grocery store, you know, dry goods, mm -hmm. canned goods, water, you know, uh, heating, heating materials, things like that. No, that's nice. A black helicopter just flew over. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, it, it's nice to... Um, to have that information so that we're prepared if in the worst eventuality and if nothing happens you got some extra food to eat for a month right exactly. uh, because I, I would feel i would feel bad if i had if i knew this information and i didn't tell the people that are following me right now what i've learned and you know the thing is even in the case of the looking glass material there is an eventuality that there's going to be survivors and the survivors are still the people that are gonna the I, you can be sure of this karen those people that are in the parasite class, as you so aptly call them, they know this stuff is going on. They're watching this happen. They've done also simulation models, and they have some of the most powerful computers working out the probabilities. And they have their their deep underground military bases. They have their places in high mountainous, you know, terrain in the, underground in the mountains and stuff like that, where they can go for shelter to wait it out. They're not going to tell us about an event like this. They're never going to tell you about a major solar flare that they see coming because they don't, they're, they're going to know it's going to create massive panic. People are going to ask a lot of questions. But here we have seven months time. That's still a lot of time to prepare. So we should really be poking our officials 
just like I was, you know, on the last Inspired, we talked about the looking glass and, and the, and the uh, Gideon material was, we should be using this material to poke our officials who are, we've given the responsibility to through our vote in our so-called democracy to make decisions for us and to help us, you know, steer through our world, they should be aware of this material and be doing something about it. And if they aren't doing something about it, why not? So that's the whole point of, of putting this out there, not to create fear, not to create panic, because we have time. We have time to prepare. So there's no reason to be in fear right now. And if it's our time to go, it's our time to go. You know, we do know, I think, in the meantime, that the physical body is not the end all and be all to our, our real existence our real existence exists outside of the, the physical dimension oh uh, absolutely now can you tie a little bit in about uh what's coming from the central sun of our galaxy because that's happening at the same time and so can, do you want to tell the viewers a little bit about that sure <clears throat> if you look at this diagram here this is um basically um a, de a repli replication or representation of this our galaxy on, on a in a in a thermal graphic um frequency spectrum that was provided to us by an astrophysicist who works who used to work at the max planck institute and he fortunately because he once worked there he has access to the data even to this very day and he's been he's been finding and that's one of the reasons he came out to uh my biophysicist friend Dieter to visit him personally is because he shared with him the actual data that he's been getting that's very current and that is that there's a kind of a resonant frequency increase coming from the center of our galaxy which you see here in this red part you know and um, you can see it here again this is another depiction of our of our galaxy and the arms of our galaxy and if it's basically if you were to turn this sideways you would it would be like a pancake you know kind of like you see in this diagram right but uh, we are here in this area and we're in a place right now in this sort of a darker area, which means there's there's less, um, you know, matter there. It's, it's open. It's more open and it, uh, there's no interference. And from the center of the galaxy, the uh, the um, particles and the X-rays and the frequencies, they tend to travel along the magnetic lines, just like in our planet. And they form along these lines and they travel between you know these arms and so right now we're in this kind of sweet spot um you know we have a cycle of twenty six thousand years as far as i understand as he explained it where we travel above the galactic plane uh thirteen thousand years and then we cycle through the center again and then below the galactic plane thirteen thousand years and we continually go up and down through this cycle and right now we're in that place right now in the middle where we're actually getting the maximum amount of like you know exposure to these particles and the last time that happened was 13,000 years ago and he was saying that's when the flood you know the flood the biblical flood apparently took place right so mm -hmm. you know we're at a very apocalyptic you know literally if you look at it in terms of if you're into the bible into that material if you give it any credibility then you know we're at, at a very apocalyptic point right now because we're at a point where we are going to be getting that um full exposure to that information because frequency is a carrier uh frequencies carry information and particles you know and, and all these things that are coming are interacting with certain organs in our body one of them i was mentioning earlier the pineal gland mm -hmm. the pineal gland in particular resonates um it has two frequencies with which it um which trigger it one of them is eight hertz that's the frequency of the schumann resonances around yes. our planet which are mm -hmm. based on the magnetosphere as well and the other is 150 megahertz which is also interestingly corresponds to the frequency rate of our dna so as you know i don't know if you know much about music but if you take two pitch uh, tune forks and, and bang one and they're both the same tuning and you put the one you just banged up beside the one that's not vibrating it'll both they'll both begin to vibrate and it's through this resonance that information is being transmitted in the case of sound or sound tone the tone right so mm -hmm. the uh, information that's coming through from the center of our galaxy seems to be kind of like like is it you know it's quite the coincidence you'd have to say that it would be happening right now at this particular point in our evolutionary consciousness because the Maya talked about the Hunab Ku, which they said was a ray that came from the center of our galaxy, which brought wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's uncanny that right now we're in this sweet spot where we are going to be exposed 
to that information, whatever it is. And it's going to stimulate our pineal gland. It's going to activate certain things. And some people might be feeling, and people already are feeling it. It began, you know, these frequencies began to accelerate around starting in 2012. And in 2019 was a major increase in them. And right now we're sort of in the middle of the most intense version of this, um, yeah, call it information carrier um stuff that's coming at the at the from the center of the galaxy at us that's another very important piece of the puzzle which a lot of people probably don't know about it's not information mm -hmm. you're going to be seeing um another thing that's interesting that i could show you here is uh, i showed this on on inspired this is the uh the last three solar cycles and you yeah. can see that the solar cycles have been the activity of the sun, the intensity of the sun has been going down. So we're at what's called a grand solar minimum right now, which means that the uh, amount of uh, the, the, the sun actually has like an aura, which is you could say the, um, you know, like the, we have an aura, the sun has an aura. The sun's aura is called the heliosphere. The heliosphere is its magnetic, magnetic inf influence on the entire planetary body of those planets that are spinning around the sun. And so what's happening is that when that heliosphere shrinks because the sun activity is shrinking, we're not what used to protect us. This heliosphere actually protects us from these cosmic radiations or prevents them from getting through, let's say. Um, and, and when they um, when that heliosphere shrinks, the amount of protection, of course, diminishes as well. So we're now also being you know, we're not only getting the stuff from the center of the galaxy, but we're getting it like the sun said, OK, I'm out of the way, guys, go for it. You know, so it's it's that's happening as well at the same time. And, you know, we can this has also been measured. I mean, here's another graph that I can show you. This this was a research done in Russia that shows the cosmic rays. They graph them, right? They keep a monitor on them. And usually, you know, at the time when the solar goes to a minimum, because the heliosphere is healthy, the actual cosmic rays are diminished, you know, and you can see them depicted here. These are the last three solar cycles. But now what's happened, starting with the 24th solar cycle, even in the solar minimum, the actual cosmic rays are in, are still coming at us. So it's coming, the data is coming at us from there as well, right? And that there's another aspect to it, which is interesting, which has to do with uh, positrons. And th those positrons are like, in a way, um, they're cleansing us karmically because they're antimatter. Positron is the antipole to electrons. Electrons are matter and positrons are antimatter. So Barbara Han Crow wrote this. She said, our karmic cleansing accelerates when the positrons, antimatter to the electron in our body, are released and collide with their corresponding electron twins. So right now we're in an actual karmic release pattern, right? Um, you know, the twins are drawn to us from all over the universe. Uh, in the beginning, we were overwhelmed by the amount of data of forgotten information because the various numerous lost pair particles of ourselves are now available again. So we're being reunited with this information that's been lost for many, many, many thousands of years. Right now, at this particular moment in time, it's happening, Karen. So it's yeah. just pretty incre incredible what's going on. It really is. It really is. And interestingly, um, the the intel I get from my spiritual sources is that caring for the body temple is extremely important. What we yes. eat, what we think, what we do, who we associate with. And that allows us to hold these higher frequencies so these natural phenomenon can come in and do the work, I think, that they're intended to do for us. And a lot of people are not caring for their temple bodies and not caring about what they eat. And I think it's so important. And, and trust me, it's not easy to shift. It's taken me 20 years to get my diet pure and, and, and to, for it to just be my everyday way of life and no longer an effort you know, to, to, to care for myself. But um, wow, there's a lot of people, again, it goes back to they just don't want to do anything, wait for the Savior. And I, I kind of blame yeah. the churches, especially the Christian churches a bit about that. I'm not anti-Christian. I just have a different perspective on what Christianity means. For me, it means we become more like the Christ. We transform yes. ourselves and then we save the world rather than waiting for 
Jesus to come down in a cloud and, and all that yeah. other stuff, you know, because right. it's, there's a huge part of this is our personal responsibility. It's huge. I'm, I'm so and, glad you uh, brought that up about the diet. You know, that's, that's so critical. That's, I can't stress that more than, than you just mm -hmm. did. That's critical. The right kinds of foods will fortify your body to be able to deal with this kind of energy that's coming at you. Yes, yeah. ab absolutely. And it's, it allows us also, all the people I know, which seems to be in the minority of people who are very careful about their body temple and what they feed it uh, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, we're remaining fairly intact considering the kind of stresses we've had put on us, especially the last three years. And we're doing really quite well uh, compared to a lot of other people. But, um, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And so part of my mission is to share the quantum health transformation program, but also to promote people like yourself, who have very, very valuable intel and information to also help us with our journeys. One other quick thing I wanted to say is, you know, I laugh every time I hear about the, the parasite class having their underground um, uh, um, luxury homes and all the rest. I thought, you know what, if there's a sickest bunch of people in the world, it would be them. And here they're going to be all shoved down together with themselves. You know what I mean? And I know one thing for sure, and that is that the, the life lessons come to us regardless of who we are or what we do. And so they're not going to escape anything. Better to stay here and do the work. You know, I tell people, get right with yourself. Get right with the people you love. Get right with God, whatever you perceive that to be. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm rambling on and we're quick, quickly running out of time, but I want to give you a uh, time to share whatever you want to share with, with the audience today, uh, Frank. And then after that, I want you to um, use spoken word to give where people can find you because um, this podcast will be going out through Spreaker to iHeartRadio and, and um, uh, I don't know, a whole bunch of a whole bunch of audio podcasts where they're not going to actually see. I'm going to run a run along the border bottom of this video your contact and some of your contact information but i want those who are listening to also hear um, your final messages and also where people can find you one of the things that i always try to convey to people is to understand that the idea of timelines for example is very as a very easy way to help understand where society is moving and, you know, as much as there's people out there saying that there's only one timeline, we've already landed on it, we've already evolved. If you if you try to look at it more um, with, you know, with more objectivity, then I, I always try to explain it like this, that the, the timeline that we're on the, the is, is built by the consensus of our participation with it. And, you know, we talked about resonance a bit today and information coming through via resonance. Well, you also, um, you know, with your existence, you have a certain resonance. And when you go into resonance with the mainstream, let's say the consensus timeline, the one that's pushing itself out there with great gusto, you know, with lots of, you know, backing, uh, without questioning that, then you're giving away your energy, then, you know, your, your resonance is being, is being sucked away from you and is going to feed something which isn't beneficial for the ultimate potential of humanity. So I would always stress for people to go into their own resonance. And it's very interesting because the fact that the magnetosphere of our Earth, that's a, something we didn't mention earlier, is that the magnetosphere is decreasing intensely. Our planet's magnetosphere is, is shrinking rapidly. And that means that, you know, we have um, this compass that our, our um, bodies tune to. They have, you know, done studies with astronauts that have hallucinatory experiences when they're in, in space cut off from the magnetic, magnetosphere of the Earth. And as this magnetosphere is diminishing, what's interesting is that we have one particular organ in our body which generates a very powerful magnetosphere. That's our heart. And that mm -hmm. had, extends all the way out to four meters from our body. So we have to actually, it's a symbol for the fact that we have to use our heart as the magnetic compass now moving forward. And so all of our decisions 
uh, in, in terms of shaping a timeline play into what we give our consensus to. And if we really want to create a new timeline and a new earth, and a new paradigm, then we need to visualize that paradigm. We need to visualize that earth. We need to spend time every day, um, you know, focusing on what it is. We need to put it to task, do something that is going to lead you toward that timeline, to manifesting it. And that mm -hmm. means taking away your attention from the timeline that is leading us toward the transhumanist, AI dominated, you know, digital soulless society, which is the one that people like Yuval Harari are, at, you know, are explaining to us right in our faces without any shame or whatsoever. They're telling us there is no soul. That's just all fake news. We're heading into immortality via a fake artificial reality. And that's where they want to go. We don't want to go there. We want to go and maximize our human, full quantum human evolutionary potential. But we can't do that if we become synthesized. So we have those facilities. We just haven't unlocked them. So right now, it seems like the universe has put all those cards on the table and said, go for it, humans. You can do it. You know, don't wait for the savior. Start creating that timeline. And then that other one will begin to wither. And so even the cataclysmic event, which could come, which, you know, whatever form it takes, there is going to be a cataclysm event. There's no way around it. It's It's been a cycle that has been documented through ancient history it's just a fact the fact that they found fossil samples you know uh, um, in you know antarctica and in the a arctic of plants and trees and vegetation that just you know froze instantly indicates that some stuff like this happens on a regular basis and we could be right at the cusp right now but but what's true is that we actually can influence it through our consciousness and that's been explained to us also by the j-rods and the which I talk about in the Tale of Two Timelines webinar. You know, the actual mechanism for that is in place. We, it's a dialogue with the universe. So I encourage people to, to do that, to focus on a positive timeline, to visualize it in their mind's eye, to start actively doing things that, that is going to lead that timeline and pretend it's going to happen. Just, you know, pretend it's going to come, but do something like it's going to come. Don't just expect it's going to come on its own because it won't come on its own there's a lot of people out there that are ne not necessarily good people there really are you could say evil people out there and whether you want them to go away or wish them away they're going to do their thing and if you do nothing and, then, and if you do not look at what they're doing and realize what they're doing and, and make a decision to no longer give it your energy then you're contributing in a way to the problem of that happening so that's i think the main message that i would like to leave with your, your viewers today and if people want to go and learn more about me then they would go to my website uh, frankjacob.com that website has links at the top where you can get to all of the films that that we produce but this the film's website as well as screenaddiction.com uh, or you could go to the uh, to get to the webinar you would go to cyberhive.tv but again, if you can't remember those, just go to frankjacob.com. That's probably easy to remember. There are links to all those websites directly at the top. And you can also reach out if you scroll down to the bottom of that site. There's a contact form for you to reach out if you have something you want to tell me or share with me. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Well, it's been a, a pleasure, Frank. Thank you for making the time because I know you're in Germany. I'm in Canada, so it's an eight-hour difference. So it's it's your evening's getting on there. And uh, yeah, I just appreciate you so much. I appreciate your work. I encourage the audience, please visit Frank's website and check out A Tale of Two Timelines and find out what you can do to help bring about the changes we want to see and to become the change you want to see in the world. So thank you, uh, Frank, for joining us. Thank you to the audience. And we'll see you next week on the Quantum Guide Show. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for joining us on the Quantum Guide Show. Become the change that you wish to see in the world. Subscribe to my YouTube, Odyssey, and Telegram channels. Click this video and share it with your friends. You can also find the Quantum Guide Show and my other podcast called Aliens and Astrology on the Forbidden Knowledge News Network. That's www.forbiddenknowledge.news. And while you're at it, check out my website, www.karenboltonhealthcoach.com, 
where you will find some amazing products and services and an abundance of free resources to help you with your journey. All of the links are in the description below. And in the meantime, until we see you next week, keep up the good work. All my inner strife to rest For time gives birth to a redness It all makes sense well more or less And the sages put me to their test With heart and soul I do my best To find the answers to my quest I wonder and I must confess I don't know where it Is all in 